Oh, Perry? Yeah. Can you just pass me the bottle of the wine, please? Thank you. channel the daily wine so today we are trying a bottle of sauvignon i think it is yet yeah, sauvignon blanc and i'm going to be talking about um blood donation so i went to give blood today and i thought i might as well make a video because my last how-to video kind of worked people found it helpful which is nice it's not just useless rubbish so i thought i'd give her like a little how to donate blood kind of video and any worries people tend to have that i can kind of answer because I don't find it intimidating at all. I don't really have a fear of needles or anything, but I know some people do, and it can often help to know what type of needle they're using and the size and stuff. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing today. But first, let's get on with trying the wine. So I have a bottle of Isla Negra, uh, Sauvignon Blanc, Pedro Ximenez. Uh, it's Chilean. Inspired by the coast. That's nice, there's a picture of a seagull on it. Isla Negra is a seaside village famous for the artists and writers who came to be inspired from the ghost and the mystical landscape. Ugh, a bit sick. Our wines capture the charms and characteristics of this unique setting all in one bottle. Aromas and flavours of grapefruit, lime and gooseberry combined in the Sauvignon Blanc slash Pedro Ximenez. What is that? Two different types of wine? I don't know. Perfect for drinking with seafood and salads served chilled. So it is in fact chilled but that's because it is so cold in here today i'm literally wearing a fleece because i'm freezing but uh, it's disgusting i'm just wearing all black but it's so cold to wear anything else i've got jogging on slippers and socks on the heating is whacked up and i'm just i'm absolutely frozen so yeah so this is a bit too cold for me so this was rare really cheap actually so this was five pounds 75 for the bottle i got it from the corner shop because i thought oh no and then i thought i don't want to go to tesco so and also we've just had a new tesco built near us and they've taken down the old one instead it's rubbish it's the worst tesco i've ever been in in my life everything's much more expensive and there's just like no sense to the aisles there's nothing makes any sense there's barely anything in it and it's the worst so yeah I hate the new Tesco, so I thought I'd get this from good old Premier instead. <coughs> that was a really strong whiff then. Lime, I definitely got the lime, and, and the gooseberry to be fair. I had a gooseberry gin earlier, and I can smell that in it. I don't know if I could smell the grapefruit. However, I can smell the other two, which is, is, which is good. And the colour's nice as well, it's like not too dark, not too pale. I did put it with lemonade today because I'm getting really bad indigestion, so I wanted something that's going to go down a bit nicer than like harsh wine. So I have put lemonade with it, I'm sorry, but just let me do me, okay? Cheers. That is really fruity and does taste like gooseberry. That tastes almost identical to the gin that I had earlier because I had the gin with lemonade. That tastes very, very similar, super sweet. Not harsh on the back of your throat. Yeah, I like it. Just like smooth in your mouth as well. Wow, wow, we were. So, what would I rate it out of ten? Oh, that's actually really, that's actually one of my favourite ones I think I've ever had. That's absolutely delightful. But I did have a lot of lemonade with it. I do have to count, take the lemonade into account. I'll try a tiny bit of it without lemonade. Just as good. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, that's just as good. Oh, a little bit heartburning there, but that might be my already indigestion that I have. I think I would rate that a solid eight out of 10. It is nice. It did just give me a pang of heartburn, but again, I do already have a bad indigestion at the moment, so it could be that. And it's nice, it's sweet, which is funny, despite having like a lot of sour undertones. It's a very, very sweet wine. Well done, Isla Negra. 8 out of 10. Let's move on. So, moving on to blood donation. So, I have not been able to donate blood for about two years, I think, and it's been really frustrating. So, the first time I went to give blood, I had just had um, surgery in hospital, and it wasn't enough time after that because I lost a bit of blood there. So, there wasn't enough time for me to recover to go and donate. 
Then I went after that, and because I had an upset stomach, you're not allowed to give blood. Then I went after that, so that's twice, and it's usually like a couple of times in a year. Then last year I think I went to go, and I had just caught a cold, and so I was really ill. Then the time after that I went to go, my blood should, my blood levels were too low, so I couldn't do it. So it's finally, it's come around at last. I have finally been able to donate blood again. I was so happy. The ladies there are so nice. I talk to them all the time. I've known them since I was younger donating blood and I used to be able to go more frequently. So they were like, oh my God, at last. But we'll talk more about that in a second. So the blood donation process is super, super simple. So first of all, you just need to sign up online on the NHS blood website. I think it might be called NHSBT for like blood transfusion or something, I don't know. And yes, you sign up on there, you will get a, you get to choose your appointments, you can list them by re how close they are, so you can either have a look for ones that are closest to your home, so I often go to one that's actually a bit far out on my home because the bus doesn't go directly there, or there's one in a, another town that's a little bit closer. You can go by either of those. So, uh, or you can, or you can go by appointment date. So, what's what's the quickest appointment you can do? I usually do it by closeness because I always know I'm gonna end up not being able to donate anyway. So I go, let's go by closeness, and then maybe in that period of time, I'll have, be able to donate again. I had my appointment today, and I turned up at ten to six. My appointment time was so I turned up dead on time. You go in, you uh, have to wear a face mask the whole time, obviously, which is fine. And you have to use sanitizer. And then just before you go in, they say, can you just read this big board here? And there's a little, like, well, not little, a big board at the side just telling you, oh, if you have any of the COVID symptoms, do this. If you have any of this, do this. If you have any of that, do this. And it's all, it's all like a COVID thing before you get into the building. So it's like, if you had any symptoms in the last 28 days, go home. Even if you've tested negative, stuff like that. Then once you get inside, you have to hand over your letter. So in the post, you get sent a letter asking you a set of like 30 very intrusive questions um, just to make sure you're safe to donate blood, basically. But you answer them at home beforehand. If you forget your form when you go there, don't worry. They have spares that you can fill out whilst you're there. I always forget mine. I actually remember to take it today and the nurses were very impressed. So I always forget, but I actually remember it's today. So don't worry if you don't have it on you. And the questions range. So they range from, ah, oh, have you ever slept with someone with hepatitis? To when did you last go on holiday? Have you had a tattoo or piercing? Stuff like that. So they do range. They are very, very personal, but it's in the best interest of the public and everyone else and you as a donor to keep you safe to make sure that you only can donate as and when. So yeah, fill out your sheet. And then if you do tick yes for anything, they'll just go through that with you when you get there, basically, which is actually, I say the last time was blood. It was blood, too low blood count before. And then the time before that was because I had just got my nose pierced. So not allowed to do it. You sit down and they give you a book to read and it just tells you you must not donate if uh, you have any of these symptoms or any of these conditions or you or like the very worst of the questions that are on the page so like if you think you've caught this or that you must not donate so that's all inside this little booklet. It's also in the booklet to say that you consent having read that and signed your form after to having your blood tested and donated and then being able to contact you if needs be and that they'll store your information in case they have anything to get hold of you about in regards to your blood. So I'm like, that's fine. If you test it and there's something wrong with it, I want to, I really would like to know. But I think you're kind of crazy if you look at that and go, oh, actually, no, thank you. Like, yes, absolutely, sign me up. So then you sit down for a minute. They give you a big old pint of water that you need to drink. Sit down and drink that whilst you read through your booklet. And then once you've done that, just hand your booklet back over. Then, um... You wait some time. I waited quite a while today, but it was very, very busy there. There were lots of people there today. So I waited, oh, 25, 30 minutes, I think, before I got called. I think that was about it. But once you've been called, the process is much quicker and it's not always that long. It totally depends where you go. Don't be put off by how long it takes. Sometimes you're in and out of there within 10 minutes. So yeah, it just totally depends. I obviously picked quite a busy night and it is usually busier in the evening time anyway, which is when I like to go. I, I'd recommend going in the day because that's when it's emptiest and I've been in the day a couple of times. Then once you're done, eventually the nurse will call you because she'll have like a list of names she needs to get down and she'll call you over. And so I saw the lovely Fiona who is my favourite person in the world. So when me and my granddad used to go together, he can't go anymore because he's on blood thinners, we used to like race and make our, do our hand exercises to see who could pump the most blood the quickest. And when I saw her, she was like, hello. And I was like, oh, hi. 
And we were, she was basically just saying, like, oh, it's been a while. I was like, yep, yeah, today is the day. I said, Fiona, I feel it. Today, I'm going to be able to give blood. She was like, yep, yeah, I've got my fingers and toes crossed for you. So then they sit you down and they take you through your your booklet, your page, basically. So on the flip side of it, there's a few more questions that they have to ask you. So they have to ask you about your ethnicity. They have to ask you about a couple of other things, or COVID-related things, and just general safety things that everyone hears. Then they flip it over and they start to go down the list and just highlight any yes questions that you've had. So for her, she stopped on, have I had any aspirin or painkillers in the past seven days? I said, uh, yeah, I had ibuprofen, but at the time of writing that, it was seven days before that. So it's well, not right now, because I'd done it two weeks ago, I filled out the form. Then she asked me, oh, you've had a tattoo or a piercing in the last 12 months. I was like, yeah, I had a piercing uh, four months ago. Uh, five months ago, sorry. She was like, yes, okay, that's fine. Then she moved down to any jabs or vaccinations. I said, yeah, I have my COVID jab. She said, when was that? I said, end of August. She was like, fine. Then the last one was, have you been traveling abroad? Which I said, yeah, I just went to Malta recently. She has to go through a little book and find out if Malta's a safe place to uh, to receive blood from if you've been there in a certain amount of period of time, which is, it was fine. She's like, right, all the checks are passed. I was like, yeah, this is a good start. Then comes the blood test, so I'm thinking like, oh no, oh, this is where it went wrong last time. So they have two little vials, one blue, one green one. I don't know what the difference is. I think one might, the green one might be for people who are donating platelets. I was donating blood, possibly platelets, possibly plasma. There are two, there are different things. So she asked which hand you donate from. I say, uh, what arm? I say I donate from my left arm because I'm right-handed. So she said, okay, I'll take your right hand, please. Puts the tiniest, tiniest needle, like an insulin needle, just there, click, you you start to bleed and they'll squeeze it out to the point where it's so small you can't even see where the dot is. I'm covering a bruise on my finger because otherwise you'll think it's that, it's not that, it's somewhere there. There, yeah, so then she takes your blood, she, sque she squeezes it out a few times and wipes, I guess, to get the clean blood out or the thinnest blood out. I don't actually know what that's for. Gets a little pipette and squeezes it into the thing and that's basically to check that your blood count isn't too low because if it's too low you risk passing out or becoming ill stuff like that so you just have to make sure you've got enough blood in you before you donate and it was a success we did a little celebratory dance we just sat there like this like yeah oh yeah and i was so happy she was like oh my god she went thank goodness she's like it's been too bloody long it's not fair is it she said it's so disappointing when you try and go and you can't i was like yeah it really is so bless her heart she was like i'm so happy for you i was like thank you it's really weird it's like a very really lovely environment to be in everyone's just so friendly so chatty so yeah we chatted for a bit and she's like well your checks are all done then in that case follow me so then you go and take a seat at the end of the table where they arrange your blood bags and in those little packs so they have like a a, a, like a little tray this big and they put everyone's blood pouches in and all of your stuff so they put your documents in there your stickers your labels your packaging stuff like that all of your stuff goes in here that's for you to take give blood to basically so once they've done that she goes back to her little area where she's doing the checks mostly and someone else comes over to actually put the needle in you and stuff so she this other lady comes over i didn't manage to catch her name which is annoying and she basically was labeling up and barcoding all of my bags so that they could go yes this is her blood this is her blood and preparing it to be taken basically then they ask what arm you donate from i say oh i donate from my left arm so they make sure they can find you a seat with a left armed left-handed uh like stirrup kind of thing for your arm once you do that you go back and you sit in the chairs and they kind of make you as comfortable as possible they've got these like blue super hospital looking cushions that go under your head and under your feet to keep you elevated and then this chair like rocks back it is amazing it's like a complete egg shape and there's all like open egg shape so it's really curved and as soon as you sit in it they tip you right back so you're laying like back but it's so comfortable you know it's a really comfy seat then you uh the lady cleans the area with antiseptic uh makes has to wait till it's dry so while she's doing that she's doing more preparation getting all the bags sorted pumping up your arm with a one of those blood pressure things that you squeeze, pumping that up, putting the cuff around your arm, making sure she can find the vein and stuff. I have been always lucky. I've got really, really green veins. I don't know if you can see. It's not on this arm so much. The other arm where I give blood from is super bright and like sticks out. It's really, really veiny. So yeah, so she prepare, prepares that whilst you're just waiting for her to you leave your arm out like that. And then she says, right, can you do one big squeeze for me, please? So that she can find the vein. She presses for the vein and then in goes the needle. The needle is not bad at all. So it's uh, more a cannula because so, it's a tube so that they can get the blood out. It is 
uh, it is uncomfortable for like a half a second and then it's fine it's like oh it's in and you completely forget about it it just hangs there they put tape over it so it doesn't move they tape it all the way down your arm so that it's not wiggling about because that's gross and that's already attached to all of your bags and stuff so they literally just put it in a little device that tells how much blood is in there and it weighs it and when it does when it's done it'll make a noise once you have started that they give you also give you a sheet of exercises to read whilst i was waiting to have my in, uh, needle put in little sheet of stuff to read just saying about exercises and well-being and the suggestions of things you can do whilst you wait which we were both really laughing over because one of the suggestions was read and we were like okay reading isn't too bad draw you're gonna have one arm available like how are you drawing play games on your phone and it was like i i can because i'm super one-handed but like it's not that easy to be honest and, like how are you gonna read though when you can't turn the page anyway it's well difficult so yeah we were having a little giggle about that and then once my arm's in my blood gets taken and it's just like a really easy process from there you've got to do a few exercises so squeeze your hand open squeeze your hand shut you also have to do the same with your butt cheeks which is really funny like sit there like Argh! almost like you're doing a kegel uh, so just squeeze in those throughout and then you have to like cross and uncross your legs as well And they added new ones in since I last went So they've got like a little leg thing that you lift your legs up and down to do as well Just exercises to keep your blood pressure down and keep your blood flowing basically Once you're done donating the little beeper goes off so it's like beep 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 It's really loud and then someone comes over and it's like you're done and I was like that was quick and they were like that was quick and i was saying about how me and my granddad used to race and at that point fiona comes over and how is your granddad i was like yeah i've just beaten his score i think five minutes 45 seconds not everything in life is a competition but that certainly is and that is a good time especially when you google and it says the average time to give blood is five to ten minutes i'm like oh five to ten min ten minutes that's long so uh, so yeah <laughs> I'm a little bit too competitive for my own good, I think. Also, it doesn't matter what time you get. It's just a little competition me and my granddad used to do. We used to do like the most exercises so that we could see who could donate it quickest. Then they take the thing out of your arm. They ask you to apply pressure with three fingers to your to your arm whilst you hold the gauze on to make sure it's not bleeding. And whilst they're doing that, she's uh, doing more prepare preparation on the bag. So writing down, is it done? Sticking on more barcodes, stuff like that. Loads of admin work that happens to these bags. To make sure that it's going all along safely basically and then she puts on a plaster and a little roll of something as well that like applies pressure the plaster you have to wear for a minimum of six hours so she says just keep it on overnight the little roll you only have to have on for half an hour but i've literally just got home that is what it looks like so there is the plaster there is the roll that's applying pressure i think of oh she did stick it on my scab though oh i think she tried not to to be fair it's like that's the only bit it's not really stuck down <laughs> Oh bless her heart. I've only bled badly once throughout the entire time that I've done it and it wasn't even badly, it was just it seeped through the plaster but only happened one time. Rarely, rarely happens to be honest. So yeah, that's not something to be worried about. If you're worried about seeing a lot of blood, yes, your blood bag is next to you but you don't have to look at it. I like looking at it because I'm kind of gross. But you're not going to be physically bleeding down your arm. It's very, very contained and super, super neat processes to make sure that none of that happens so if you are bleeding the gauze that's on there they'll hold and then they'll sort it out for you if it is so you don't need to worry too much they seat you up slowly in your seat so it's on like a lever so ever so slowly you can go up and up and up and because i hadn't been for a while i had to be escorted to the table by a lovely lady called karen a nice karen and she was like i'll walk with you don't worry we were just chatting and stuff she was really nice as well takes me over to sit at the refreshment table then you get a free glass of water squash tea or whatever you fancy and a free packet of crisps and a free biscuit as well like i took home some lotus biscuits she says take these for after i was like thank you so yeah then you just sit there i had a little red card with me that said returning new such returning donor basically because i haven't been there for so long and that was basically like i meant to hand it over but the lady was saying like no no i'll i'll take you over and just keep it with you and you just have to stay there for about 15 minutes i didn't say the full 15 minutes i didn't think i was feeling okay i will say because i hadn't given blood in so long i was feeling super lightheaded i didn't eat the best today i did tell them that i did you shouldn't do that you should eat properly but i was just like yeah i've done it i'm this far now i'm not going to tell you i haven't eaten so yeah, I should have eaten properly and you should always keep your fluids up in the day as well because otherwise you're just going to feel rubbish. I actually felt fine, but I was super lightheaded and then when I left, I was like, I feel very dizzy. But it's not really a big deal, it's just dizziness. You just make sure if it's your first time going and you're worried about fainting, you're with someone because otherwise that can be a bit worrisome. But I knew I wasn't going to faint, so I was fine. That's pretty much it. 
So the, I think the main concerns people have are about the needles. So the needle is fine, you don't feel it. If you've had a tattoo, a tattoo is worse. If you've had any piercing, a piercing is worse. It's not even painful, it's just like an inside scratch in your skin. At best, uncomfortable, that's it. It's not, or at worst, uncomfortable. It's not painful at all. People often have questions about can they donate? The best thing to do is to go on the NHS website because then if you've got any questions, it's all listed in category. So it'll tell you like, can I donate? If I've done this, if I've had this, if I'm pregnant, if I'm this, if I'm that, and it will let you know. I've never been and seen someone faint. That was my 10th donation which is really shoddy. I should be on like 15 by now, but because of everything that goes wrong, I just can't. So that was my 10th donation, a little bit gutted, which it was more, maybe even more than that, to be fair. You can do it like twice a year, three times a year. I've never seen anyone faint at all. It's just, it doesn't really happen. Like I say, at worst, people usually feel lightheaded. If you do faint, there's hun like loads of nurses around to support you and to help you if you do faint, so just don't stress out. But really, if you've got any worries or any questions, let me know. I haven't done it in such a long time, so I know it can be a little bit nerve wracking, because even I was thinking like, what is, how, much, how painful is this? I can't remember. But any questions, I'll be really, really happy to know, help with and help you out and answer if you have any. Just comment them down below. And if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to subscribe. I know it's a little bit long, I just thought I'd do a bit of an in-depth process, because I know, for example, when I first went to get my belly pierced, I watched hundreds of YouTube videos on the actual belly piercing. I even watched a video of it being pierced. Yeah, it, I actually quite find it satisfying still to this day, but I know that I wanted all of the information beforehand and it, a lot of people are like that, so I thought, yeah, why not? So yeah, that's the blood donation process, how to give blood, and I'll put a link down below of the sign up as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've had a lovely day. I hopefully am going to eat now. It's quarter past ten, my god. Oh, no way! Perry's, Perry has got me Chinese! <laughs> and he's just waved it around the door because I was thinking, no, I'm, not, I'm probably not going to after saying that. Oh, well, in that case, I'm leaving. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Have a lovely day. Stay safe. And remember, all for wine, wine for all. Peace!